Welcome to numerical methods. So what I like to do today is, yeah, we will start a new section, a new chapter. So uh, we've seen random numbers, we've seen the Monte Carlo method. And yeah, last session was that we discussed how to use the Monte Carlo method for time discrete stochastic process. And what I like to do today is start discussing the time discretization of time continuous stochastic processes. So we have a general model in continuous time. And once we have found a way to discretize it, to transform it into a time discrete stochastic process, we can then uh, apply all these methods that we have studied so far. So let me start maybe with a small recapitulation, the Brownian motion and the Ito stochastic process. So this chapter here is only about Ito stochastic processes. Yeah, the Brownian motion is a very important uh, building block. And of course, I have an interface defining what a Brownian motion does and then have an implementation of the Brownian motion, you know, time discrete Brownian motion. We will have a look at this uh, later because I will use it in a numerical experiment. So the Brownian motion is defined here. Yeah, we have the Brownian motion is a stochastic process that has initial value zero, so P almost surely. Then the path are continuous, also P almost surely. So you can find an equivalent modification of the stochastic process such that this map, if you plug in an omega, so this here is, for example, one sample path, starting in zero. So then this map, yeah, T maps to W of T and omega is uh, continuous. And then we have two properties for the increments. So there is a time discretization. So T0, T1, Tk given here. And then we take a look at the increments. So W of T1 minus W of T0 w of t2 minus w of t1 and so on, w of tk minus w of tk minus one. So the Brownian increments. And these increments are independent. And we also know the distribution. So w of t minus w of s is normal distributed with mean zero. And okay, this here is uh, in yeah, already in vector notation. So you see here there is uh, a to the power of n. Yeah, So it's a vector valued um, Brownian motion, or it is a vector of one dimensional Brownian motions. So that means I have here the identity matrix. Yeah, So that means if you look at the single component, yeah, the variance grows linear in time. Now, this looks like a strong assumption, but note that if you have uh, two independent random variables, yeah, the expectation of the sum of the two random variables is just the sum of the expectation. And if they are independent, you also have the property that the variance of the sum of the two random variables is the sum of the variances. So if the variance of an increment is associated with time, then of course you have the property that if you move over two time steps, yeah, the variance is actually the sum of the variances of each individual time step. So I almost have already the property that the variance has to grow linear in time from property three that the increments are independent. Nice thing is that this already gives us a way to construct the Brownian motion because if you like to look now at, say, some w at tk, then you can write this as a telescope sum. You just take the sum j from 0 to k minus 1, and then it is w of tj plus 1 minus w of tj 
Okay, so these are all the increments. And of course, you have to start in zero. So W of T zero. So choose T zero equals zero will give you that this guy here, zero. And then you see that you can represent W of TK just as a sum of the independent increments. So I have here my independent increments, which we will later just call delta W TJ. I know how to sample a normal distributed random variable. I know how to sample independent normals. So you see all these guys are now independent. So you can just represent the round in motion at a later time as a sum of these independent normal distributed random variables. So we already know how to construct the Brown in motion at least in discrete time, yeah, on these on this time discretization. So here's a small illustration what we do, yeah. Recall we start in zero. So W of zero, if T zero is zero, is zero. Then if we now sample a single path, say a path omega, okay, we, we start in zero. So this means that zero is now my mean here. I add now the independent increment. So this is my delta W. You sample a random number from your normal distribution. Okay, maybe this one goes here. And then you add to this guy another normal yeah, that has mean zero. So this here is the mean zero, but now it is added to your previous value. From this, you draw another value. So maybe the new value is now here. Okay, and then you sample another normal distributed random variable yeah, from a distribution having mean zero and add it to this new value. And this will then construct your sample path. Yeah? So maybe now your sample from this distribution, this value. Okay, so we have a nice construction for the, the time discrete Brown in motion and yeah, in continuous time, the crown in motion is the building block for ETO stochastic processes. So let's shortly recall ETO stochastic processes. So maybe what you often encounter is the notation dx is mu dt plus sigma dw. But this is just a short notation. Well, it's a short notation because what has been dropped in the notation is that we actually apply here or can apply here the integral from s to t. So if you apply the integral to the left hand side, you have the integral from s to t dx of t. So integral dx yeah, is just x at the upper bound minus x at the lower bound. So this is just x of t minus x of s. So you could write, if you like here, x of t minus x of s is equal. And then what you do on the right-hand side is you also just apply the integral. So I have an integral mu dt and an integral sigma dw. And then you can move the x of s to the other side. So I have that x of t is equal x of s plus the integral from s to t mu dt plus the integral from s to t, sigma dw. So this is just a short notation to this integral representation of the stochastic process at a later time, given the stochastic process at an earlier time, plus the integral over these two things. And these two things are now two parts here. There is the classical, yeah, Lebesgue integral, well, actually with a stochastic integrand, yeah, because there is the x of t here, but you can understand it in a pathwise manner. So this is just the classical Lebesgue integral, the dt part. 
And then there is another part that now contains our Brownian motion. So this is the stochastic integral. So we integrate sigma dw. So this is the Ito integral. Well, this is the special case where you can define it a little bit more general with, say, some integrator, if you like. Okay, so what does this mean? This is the definition that you can define it as integrate some x with respect to some dy. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, what is this uh, stochastic integral? Well, if the sigma is a constant, it is that you can move the constant in front and you just have integral dw. Well, integral dw is just w at the upper bound minus w at the lower bound. So if this sigma here would be, um, for example, 1, then I would just have w of t minus w of s. So that's just my Brownian increment, a normal distributed random variable. So it means that the x at the next value is the x at the previous value plus some some normal distributed random variable. And if the time step is now infinitesimal small, you know, it is like adding small infinitesimal normal distributed random variables. So these are now our models, our um, stochastic um, processes. And I would like to uh, consider time discretization schemes. I will just now state a collection of time discretization scheme. Yeah, I will not prove them now. Some are motivated and the motivation is almost um, a proof. And then we will study them in a numerical experiment. We will have later a session where we will prove the convergence rate and there we really construct uh, this approximation and show that if time discretization becomes finer and finer, uh, we converge, yeah? then we have to define in which sense, yeah? strong convergence, weak convergence, we converge to the true solution of this um, yeah, stochastic differential equation. So discretization of time, the Euler scheme and the Milstein scheme. So in this section, we just state some time discrete approximations. And since the time discrete approximation is not identical to the true solution of the stochastic differential equation, so of the, the to the true Ito stochastic process, I will use a tilde to mark that it is actually a different stochastic process. Indeed, it is a different random variable. X tilde of ti yeah, is an approximation to x of ti. Yeah, it is a different random variable. So these are time discrete approximations to the time continuous processes. As I said, uh, convergence will be proved uh, later. So let's start now with the Euler scheme. So given an Ito stochastic process, dx is mu of t, x of t, dt, plus sigma of t, x of t, dw. The initial value is some random variable x0. I consider a time discretization given. So there is here ti, yeah? t0 less than t1, less than t2, up to tn. And on this time discretization, I now define you know, a family of random variables. So the time discrete stochastic process x tilde being just a family of random variables x tilde of ti in the following way. The x tilde at ti plus 1 is the x tilde at ti, so recursively defined going forward in time, plus mu evaluated at that previous time. So now mu evaluated at ti with the known x tilde of ti. 
times the time step size delta ti plus sigma evaluated at ti and x tilde of ti times the Brownian increment. And we initially start yeah, in the same initial value. So x tilde of C x0 is x0. So you see that you know x0, you can plug in x0 and t0 into the mu and the sigma. Yeah? Then you just multiply with the time step up to, to, to t1. You just multiply with the Brownian increment to from t0 to t1. You add this to the x tilde of zero, yeah? and you get the next value. Then you know the next value, and you can plug in the next value in the coefficients to get the value after the next value. Yeah, this scheme yeah, is yeah, claimed to be an approximation for x, at least at these discrete times. And here we have that the delta ti is our time step size, time increment, and the delta wti is our Brownian increment, just the normal distributed random variable. Yeah, this corresponds to an integration rule. So maybe just for illustration here, the small picture. Yeah, integration rule because what we have here is that we need to calculate integrals. And what this integration rule does is that if I like to integrate, say, some function, okay, here's some function, I take just the starting value of this function and then assume that the function is approximated by a piecewise constant function. And so what you do here is that you assume your coefficients are piecewise constant. And this is what you'll see there is as if you would integrate a constant, yeah, so just the constant times the time step size. So you just calculate the integral by assuming that it is this constant. And then you take the next starting value and you add the next integral. So this is the Euler Mariama scheme, sometimes also just called Euler scheme. And as I just explained, yeah, the Euler scheme derives from a simple integration rule. So the approximation that we do is that we take the original coefficient under the integral. So this is here the mu and the sigma. And then we just replace this guy with a constant, just plugging in the start time and the start value, no? the start time and the start value of the stochastic process. So this is a constant. So you can move this guy now in front of the integral and you just have the constant times the time step size. So this is that area that I approximate or the same with the stochastic integral. You, know, you plug in under the integral start time, start value of the stochastic process, then this becomes um, a constant and you then just can move the constant in front of the integral and the integral is then just your Brownian increment. Okay? So these are the um, approximations that we do. Okay, so we have here an approximation error, of course, if yeah, these coefficients here are not constant. So if they have, for example, a dependency on time, so they change over time, or if they have also a dependency here on the x, yeah, so we also replace here the x, so they change over x. I will now discuss two improvements. Yeah? One improvement improves the dt part yeah, when we have a change over time. The other improvement is 
that we improve the DW part if we have here a change in the second component. So this will be now the motivation for the Milstein scheme. It is roughly yeah, um, also a proof. So let's consider as an example the stochastic process dy is sigma 1 y dt. Yeah, so my parameter sigma 1 is a constant, but you see that this corresponds now to having the sigma of t and x being just sigma 1 times x. Yeah? So um, the coefficient in front of the dw is not constant in the second component, yeah, here in the y component. Um, so we make an approximation error you know, when we use the Euler scheme. And what comes now is really the most important technique. And actually, since I will use Euler scheme next to create the Milstein scheme, this is also a big argument why you don't use Milstein scheme in applications uh, very often. Because what we will do now is we perform a coordinate transformation to a different coordinate. And this coordinate is now here, for example, Z. Z is the logarithm of Y. And if you transform this Y, so the process dy is sigma 1 y dw, to this variable Z, you see that the stochastic process of Z has constant coefficients. So we can do an Euler scheme for Z without approximation error. And this is really a very important technique. Yeah? Make a transformation to a coordinate system where the numerical method has no or low, uh, lower approximation error. So this is Ito's lemma that we now apply. So recall Ito's lemma here. Yeah, maybe I write Ito's lemma here below and then a little bit more general notation. So if you have a stochastic process, dx is mu of t x dt plus sigma t x dw. Maybe I just write this a bit shorter, just mu dt plus sigma dw. Yeah, so I just drop the coefficients, but the coefficients are still there. And then you have that another stochastic process is a function, say it is a function of time and of this stochastic process. Yeah? So mu of t is f of t and x of t. Then I can immediately tell you the short notation or the integral representation of this stochastic process means I can tell you the new coefficients in front of the dt and dw that belong to this stochastic process. And this is what Ito's lemma gives me. So Ito's lemma tells me now the dy is, okay, there is a differential with respect to time. So I get a dt part. So basically this is just a chain rule for stochastic processes. Yeah? So then I differentiate with respect to x. So I have a df with respect to x differentiated and a dx. But since we have stochastic processes and dw dw, okay, this is just multiply to yeah, infinitesimal small normal distributed in increments. Yeah, So actually this is like having the variance of a normal distribution. Yeah, the variance of the normal distribution is linear in time. So dw dw is like a dt. Yeah, It goes linear in time. So I get another term Yeah, because yeah, differentials are everything that is linear and dw dw is a dt. So it is linear in time. So it belongs here. So I get second derivative of f with respect to x, dx, dx. And the dx, dx is just the formal multiplication of mu dt sigma dw, yeah, say squared. So I get a mu squared dt squared and a 
mu sigma dt dw, but then you just have that dt dt is zero, dt dw is zero. And dw dt is zero. And the only guy that remains is the guy that gives me the dt, yeah, the dw dw is the dt. So this is here Ito's lemma just for reference, yeah, a little bit sloppy here below. So what happens if I apply this now? Well, the x is now my y, the f is now the logarithm. Differentiate the logarithm once is a one divided by y. So if you have a one divided by y, the one divided by y in front of the dy, it will actually cancel this here. And you see that I just get a sigma one dw. But then I also have this second order term. So differentiate logarithm of y twice. This is a one divided by y for the first differentiation. And then a minus one divided by y squared for the second one. And then I get a dy dy. Yeah, but the dy dy is a sigma one squared y squared dw dw. So the y squared is canceling yeah, with the one divided by y squared from this guy. So I get actually a minus yeah, from the minus one divided by y squared, a minus one half. This is this one half sigma one squared dw dw dt. So I get this. So you see that um, Ito's lemma allows me now to transform the process here to a different coordinate. And I know now the coefficients for the process in Z. This is minus one half sigma one squared dt plus sigma one dw. Nice thing is assumption was sigma one is a constant. So this is a process with constant coefficients. So applying the integral yeah, will just get me the exact solution. Yeah, It's just uh, minus one half sigma one squared delta t plus sigma one delta w uh, for an increment delta z. So applying Ito's lemma, we have that d z, yeah, that was our process d log y, is minus one half sigma squared dt plus sigma one dw. Now I apply the integral over one time step, delta t. So this means that logarithm of y of t plus delta t, so the integral at the upper bound, minus logarithm of y is the integral here of this right-hand side. Yeah? So this is the integral I'm uh, doing here. Then I apply the exponential. So the logarithm goes away and the plus uh, becomes um, uh, a multiplication. Yeah. So I have that the value of y at the next time step is the value of y at the previous time step multiplied with the exponential of minus one half sigma squared dt plus sigma one dw. So I have a numerical scheme. Yeah? So this is a nice numerical scheme and actually it has no time discretization error um, because we used the Euler scheme for a constant uh, coefficient. If I would like to write this a little bit more uh, similar to the Euler scheme, yeah, I can give, add another y of t here and this another y of t there cancels now with y of t times minus one. Okay, so it is that the value at the next time step is the value at the previous time step plus y times exponential of this expression minus one. This looks a little bit similar to the Euler scheme. The Euler scheme was 
the value at the next time step is the value at the previous time step plus, okay, so what was my stochastic process? My stochastic process was sigma one y dw, uh, so just plus the Euler approximation of that. So this is just the y at the current time step sigma one delta w of t. No? So this would be the Euler approximation. So it is not the same stochastic process. Let's put a tilde here. So you see that now I have this part here in place of this part here, which we would have from the Euler scheme. So compare now the two parts. This here is actually the exact solution. And this is the increment from the Euler scheme. Let me make a small observation at this point here. From the solution that you have on top, so here from say star, you see that if your initial value is larger or equal to zero, then this implies that the next value is also larger or equal to zero. Because if you go back and cancel this guy with the minus one, you see all you do is that you multiply something that is larger or equal to zero with the exponential function, which is also larger or equal to zero. So this is what we have for the true solution you know, at all the time points. On the other hand, for the Euler scheme, we see that the Euler scheme will violate this. Yeah. So if you have that the y tilde of t is larger than zero, then, yeah, what do you do? You take the y tilde of t and you multiply it with a normal distributed random variable. So if now sigma one is also larger than zero, so if it would be zero, actually I would not have a stochastic process, it would be just an ODE. Then I know that there exists maybe some omega such that the stochastic process will be below zero. Yeah? So just make the random number, the delta W, uh, on that omega small enough. Yeah? It's maybe very unlikely, but it may happen. So my Euler scheme has already a defect. Starting now from the thing on the top, I can create another approximation scheme. For this, let's have a look here at this stuff that is here in the bracket. So this additional term here. And let's do a Taylor expansion of this expression. So let's have a Taylor expansion of this expression. So I know that exponential of x is 1 plus x plus x squared. So exponential of x minus 1 is approximately x plus 1 half x squared. So let's plug this in. Yeah, so I do a Taylor expansion of this. So my x here is the stuff that is here inside. Yeah, so I have x plus one half x squared. So just multiply now the terms out yeah, in the uh, square. So actually you get three terms. You get the sigma one delta w squared. You get the mixed term that contains the delta t and the delta w. And you get the delta t squared term. So these two guys here, I will drop them now. So I drop them and I drop them because this stuff here, if you take the intuition that delta w 
squared, yeah, is, yeah, the expectation is a delta T. So is like um, a delta T. So you have the intuition that this is like a delta T to the power of three half, yeah? A delta T times square root of delta T, hmm? because the delta W is like a square root of delta T. And this here is like a delta T squared. So if I'm only interested in the linear things, yeah? Uh, so the delta T, yeah, or the stuff that is less or equal linear, so the delta T to the power of one half, which is inside my delta W, the delta T, yeah, which is inside here and inside here yeah, in expectation, then I can consider these guys as higher order terms and I can drop it. So I will have an approximation. And what you have now, if you look at this, is that you have the expression that looks like the expression in the original Euler scheme, y sigma one delta w plus a correction term. And the correction term is now minus one half sigma one squared delta t. So the minus delta t multiplied with a one half y sigma squared. Yeah? So the y is here in front plus one half sigma one delta w squared. So this is also a plus one half y, the y is here in front, sigma one squared delta w squared. Okay, so I get this correction term here to the Euler scheme. No? So now plugging this in uh, here, uh, I have that we found an alternative scheme. So now since I dropped the higher order terms, this is also an approximation. So my alternative scheme is now, the next value is the previous value plus a term that looks like the one in the Euler scheme plus a correction, and the correction is plus one half sigma one squared delta w squared minus delta t. So this is, if you compare it to the Euler scheme, uh, Euler scheme, next value is previous value plus y sigma one dw. Yeah? So this is just an additional term. And take a look what this additional term does. So we had in this previous slide that the Euler scheme violates the positivity because we can choose a delta W that is very small, yeah? So goes to the negative side, yeah? So in absolute value, very large with a negative sign. So this will create the negative values. So we will add here a large negative number. If we have such a term here, it will make this guy very large. So I know that this guy is in expectation like a delta T, but this term here will add something positive if this guy here is becoming very large. Yeah? So if the delta W becomes very negative, we are very small, the delta W squared is very large and it pulls it back up again. So if delta W is very small, uh, so in the sense delta W is less or zero, delta W absolute value, very large, yeah? so a very large negative value. So that's now what I mean with very small. Then this term here will pull the value yeah, of y back up again. 
No? So this is nice because this will avoid y tilde becoming negative too often. Well, it will not avoid this completely. No? Could still happen that you hit a negative value, but it will be more rarely. We will see this in our numerical experiment. So this is now an approximation scheme. If I have the special form, dy is sigma one y dw. What if I have here something that is linear? So a sigma zero plus a sigma one times x. So consider next the stochastic process. dx is sigma zero plus sigma one x dw. So I have in addition now my sigma zero. My sigma zero is a constant. Yeah? And as previously, the sigma one is also a constant. And now I do the same trick again. I can find a coordinate transformation such that this stochastic process looks in the other coordinate the same as the previously studied stochastic process. And this coordinate transformation is y is sigma zero divided by sigma one plus x. Yeah. If you apply the dy, you have that dy is equal to dx, yeah, because the differential applied to a constant. So here the constant is zero. So dy is the dx. And what happens if you plug in now the y in the stochastic process that we have previously studied. So the sigma one y dx. So if you plug in the y there, you see that sigma one times sigma zero divided by sigma one, this is just the sigma zero, plus sigma one times dx is just the sigma one x. So you see that sigma one y dw is just my sigma zero sigma one times x dw. So I have the previous scheme, which I derived here for this special process, dy is equal sigma one y dx. I can also write this for my x, yeah, using here this nice coordinate transformation. Go back to the previous scheme and plug in here sigma zero sigma one plus x tilde and also plug it in here. So what you get is, yeah, the dy is equal to the dx. So I get that my increment for x, and this will then lead to x tilde at the, ne the next value of x tilde is equal to the previous value of x tilde plus, and now if you plug in, you see that you have sigma zero plus sigma one x tilde delta w plus one half. Okay, plug in the y, this is a sigma zero plus sigma one x tilde. If you multiply the y with one of these sigma ones, so I have another sigma one there left. And now you have the correction delta w squared minus delta t. So we arrive at this form. Yeah, so this here is just the previously derived term sigma one times y tilde of t. So I have for this general stochastic process, dx is sigma zero plus sigma one x dw. This numerical scheme that has an additional term to the Euler scheme, which is this term having this nice property that it will 
pull the stochastic process a little bit up if the delta W is risking creation of negative values. And you see that these two parts here actually correspond to, this is just my general function sigma of t and x. If sigma of t and x is just linear, well, and this guy, the sigma one, is the first derivative of the sigma of t and x. And if you write it now in this general form, this is the Milstein scheme. So the Milstein scheme, consider an e to stochastic process, dx is mu dt plus sigma dw, initial value x0, given a time discretization, t0, t1, up to tn. My numerical scheme is that the value at ti plus 1 is given by the value at ti plus just an Euler step. So now this here is just an Euler step, mu delta t plus sigma dw plus a correction term. And this correction term is one half sigma times sigma prime. So the derivative with respect to the second component multiplied with delta W of Ti squared minus delta Ti. And this is called the Milstein scheme. And this part is the Milstein correction. Okay, so we already had a nice interpretation that this part will for um, the log normal stochastic process, so the stochastic process dx is sigma x dw, correct a little bit the fact that we can generate negative values. Well, if you go back to the motivation, or the proof if you would like, you could question a little bit, well, why did I do this approximation here? I had already a numerical scheme, namely that one here on top without the approximation of the exponential. Yeah? So I made the approximation exponential x is one plus x plus one half x squared. And I dropped a few terms. Yeah? And then I also dropped a few other terms. And this is a very good question. And actually, this is what you do in practice. You often transform to a different coordinate and you do an Euler scheme in this coordinate to be more exact. So that's the reason why I do not use the Milstein scheme so often, because I can do what we did here. I can transform to a different coordinate and use the Euler scheme there. So this Milstein scheme gives an improvement if the diffusion part so if the sigma depends on x. So what about the dt part? So the following thing will improve the dt part. So consider the dt part of the Euler scheme. So what you did in the Euler scheme is that you assume that your coefficient is constant by taking here the value of the coefficient at the starting point. So I was taking the value of the coefficient at the starting point, and then I was calculating the integral, so the area, just that value times the time step size. But if you think of integration rules, you can also think of having a trapezoidal integration rule. So if you know, for example, the endpoint here, so if you know that value, then you can add this triangle here very easily yeah, and just integrate this area and you are much more accurate. 
So, what a trapezoidal rule would do, so a trapezoidal integration rule, it would take the average of the value at the starting point and the end point, and then multiply that with the time step size. So for this, I need the value of my integrand at the starting point. So here, and I need the value of the integrand at the end point. So here, in this picture, you see that this can make a big difference. Yeah, however, this requires that we know the endpoint, and this means because our coefficient can depend on the stochastic process, so the solution we like to construct, we have to know x of ti plus 1. And since we are stepping forward in time, uh, I do not, or do not know yet the x at ti plus 1. So it appears as if I cannot use this rule. But the trick of the predictor-corrector scheme is now to approximate the endpoint using an Euler step. So I will create now an approximate value, x till the star, the star is now the Euler step, x till the star using an Euler step. So this is the predictor-corrector scheme. So given an Eto stochastic process, dx is mu dt plus sigma dw, initial value x0. Uh, what do I do? Yeah, the value at ti plus 1 is the value at ti. And then I take the trapezoidal rule, one half mu x till the ti plus mu x till the star ti plus one times the time step size. The stochastic part remains as before, as in the Euler scheme, sigma of ti x till the ti delta w ti, where this x till the star is generated by an Euler step. So this guy here is generated just with the Euler scheme. So I have an Euler scheme with predictor corrector step. This looks a little bit involved. You do an Euler step and then you you use this solution just to make um, another step. But you can rewrite this scheme a little bit because you see that the Euler step that you do here below actually contains here the same step for the diffusion, right? And what you do is you just do the same step. Yeah? You have also the same starting value you just do the same step with a different part for the drift. Yeah? This is just the DT part, which we are considering here. So instead of doing now a new step, you can also just correct the value that you have found in the Euler step by, okay, this here is one half of the Euler step DT part. So you subtract one half of the Euler scheme dt part and you add one half of the corrector dt part hmm, with the new value. So this is maybe a small tip for the um, implementation. Yeah? So you can also write this that... the next value of your predictor-corrector scheme is the Euler scheme next value plus one half of the mu at ti plus one and x till the star 
ti plus one minus one half of the previous um, Euler step left. Yeah? So you can just have a single correction term. So you see, this is an Euler scheme plus a correction term that it just involves that you calculate the mu only uh, one, once once again. Yeah? You just need to calculate, recalculate this part. So mu at the endpoint has to be recalculated once, and then you can calculate this correction. This is, yeah, maybe also an implementation detail. Yeah, so this makes your code a bit cleaner because you can just use your Euler scheme, and then at the end you can decide, yeah, do you like to apply the corrector step, which is just another call to the drift to the mu yeah, and applying this correction. Yeah, that was a small tour through um, some numerical schemes. And I would like to discuss now an example. Yeah, And the example is maybe an important one. It is the log normal process. So the stochastic process that is also yeah, the Black-Scholes model. So let's assume I have constant coefficients mu and sigma. Then my process here is dx mu x dt plus sigma x dw. So you can move to the logarithm using Ito's lemma. And you know that you can actually represent this with an exact solution as mu minus one half sigma squared, yeah, coming from Ito's lemma, dt plus sigma dw. I would like to discuss now the time discretization schemes at such a process. We will have a numerical experiment for the special case where mu is equal zero. And we will analyze a little bit the approximation errors of the numerical schemes. Yeah? Note that for this special process, I have actually a numerical scheme that does not have any approximation error that is exact, yeah? because this here is the exact uh, solution. Okay, so consider the Ito stochastic process. Dx is mu, and here I still allow that mu may depend on x, you know, because for some models, this is the case, like the LIBOR market model. So mu of t and x times x dt plus sigma x dw. Then you can move to the transformed variable logarithm of x, and you apply Ito's lemma, and you have that d log x is mu of t and x minus one half sigma squared dt plus sigma dw. So you see you have actually removed by going to the logarithm the x part here. And Ito's lemma gives you an additional minus one half sigma squared in the drift. But this has some practical relevance. Yeah, it's the Black-Scholes model or yeah, with actually a more complicated drift, complicated mu, the LIBOR market model. Time discretization via the Euler scheme. So the Euler scheme is that we just freeze the coefficients at the starting time, and we have x at the next value is x at the previous value, mu at the previous time times x at the previous time plus sigma, at the previous time times x at the previous time times the w. Milstein scheme. Okay, Milstein scheme gives me the Euler step. 
So x at the next value is x at the previous value plus mu times x times delta t. So that's the Euler step plus sigma times x times delta w. So this part is the Euler step. And now I have the Milstein's correction. So the Milstein's correction was one half sigma squared x delta w squared delta w squared minus delta t. So I have another term, yeah, minus one half sigma squared x delta t. So here I rearrange the terms a little bit. So I have the dt terms on top and the delta w terms below. Uh, the delta w squared term is here. Yeah? But you see that the guys that belong to the Milstein correction yeah, is actually this here, the delta w squared minus delta t here. Yeah? That would be my Milstein scheme now for this special stochastic process. As I mentioned, a very important technique is transform to a different coordinate and do the Euler discretization there. So we already had that we can move to the log coordinate. I can look at the stochastic process for logarithm of x. So recall the log x is mu minus one half sigma squared dt plus sigma dw. So the x vanishes. And then you can do the Euler scheme for this stochastic process. So you will get log x at the next value is log x at the previous time plus mu minus one half sigma squared delta ti plus sigma of ti delta w ti. So now you can apply exponential on both sides. So apply the exponential function on both sides. So this means log x tilde of ti plus one becomes x tilde of ti plus one. And on the right-hand side, a plus becomes a multiplication. The log of x tilde ti becomes an x tilde ti. And the other stuff becomes exponential of that other stuff. And the nice thing you see that this discretization scheme looks very different from all the others. Yeah, It's now next value is previous value multiplied with something. Of course, you can add this minus one, and then it looks a little bit similar like we did for the Milstein scheme motivation. So this looks a little bit um, different, but you immediately see that this scheme will only generate positive random variables if the initial value was positive. Yeah? Because it is that I multiply here the previous value with something positive. So my stochastic process, the log normal process, has this property. If the initial value is positive, all the other values will stay positive. But um, the numerical schemes will maybe violate this property. And this numerical scheme is maybe much better. It's still a numerical scheme. You would maybe say that, okay, here there is no approximation error. No? if sigma would be a constant, but um, you still have that mu can depend on x. So it's still a numerical scheme because this coefficient can depend on time and this coefficient actually can even depend on time or and uh, state, yeah, on time and x. You also can have an exact discretization if you have, in addition, that mu does not depend on x, and you replace the sigma i's by the correct averaging of the 
integrals, yeah, actually of the integral of the coefficients. So for the mu, this is maybe clear, yeah, if the mu i is just one divided by delta t i, the exact integral, then mu i multiplied with the delta t i is just the exact integral. So mu i multiplied with delta t i is just the exact integral if you have such a constant value for the mu i. For the sigma i, this is maybe not so obvious. There is the, a little bit the E2 isometry behind this. Yeah? But um, if you have sigma i to be the square root of one divided by delta ti, the integral over sigma squared, then you have that sigma i times delta w of ti has actually the same distribution as the integral of sigma of t, t, w of t. Yeah? Um, so this would be an exact discretization. So I have no tilde here. x of ti plus 1 is equal to x of ti minus exponential, and then these special coefficients. Of course, we have the exact discretization if the mu and the sigma are constant. Yeah? Because then we can just use the Euler step. Yeah? The sigma i corresponds to the sigma of ti, yeah? if it is a constant. Let's do a numerical experiment with these discretizations of our log normal process. So I consider now my log normal process actually in my numerical experiment, I will consider a special case. I will consider the case mu equal zero, ah, but the implementation is quite general. And we will consider the three schemes, the Euler scheme, Note that the Euler scheme allows to generate negative values. The Milstein scheme, which hopefully improves this. And we will consider the log Euler scheme. So this is just the Euler scheme for log x. You find this experiment here uh, in this repository. This is not our lecture repository. This is another repository, but works similar. Yeah the FinMath experiments, you find it in this package here. And it is called Monte Carlo Scheme Test. The code is a little bit lengthy, so I will not write it down live. Uh, I will just step through it. And what my numerical experiment does is it creates now these numerical schemes with different time steps. Yeah, So we have different time step sizes yeah so we jump say from zero to the end in one step and then maybe in 10 different steps and then maybe very 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 fine and then i will have a look at the random variable logarithm of x of t well if i have a log normal process i know that this random variable logarithm of x of t is normal distributed yeah? So this guy is normal distributed. So if you have that dx is mu x dt plus sigma x dw, then you know that the d log x is mu minus one half sigma squared dt plus sigma dw. So this guy is normal distributed with mean. Okay, what is the mean? The mean is, of course, the initial value plus the integral from zero to capital T over my drift. So this is mu minus one half sigma squared times capital T. Yeah. This is the mean. And the variance, yeah, this is just, okay, this is the mean because 
the dw integrated has mean zero. So it's just the initial value plus the dt part integrated. And what is the variance? The variance is integrate the dw. This is just sigma squared times t. So the nice thing is I know the expectation and the variance of this random variable. So I can check in the end what is the outcome of my time discretization scheme yeah, with respect to the yeah, mean and variance. So we will compare the mean and variance with the analytic uh, solution. Yeah, let's have a short look to the code. Um, I will make use of a few helpers, which are here in our financial mathematic libraries. Well, I need time discretization. And of course, I have an interface that defines what a time discretization does. It has time points with indices and a number of time steps and number of time points. Of course, I have an implementation of this, yeah, a very trivial implementation. I also need the Brownian increments in my discretization scheme. Well, we will discuss these classes later again, yeah, but just uh, for reference, here in Monte Carlo, there is an interface that tells me a Brownian increment. If it is vector valued, there are different factors. A Brownian increment at a given time index. So the Brownian motion is associated with the time discretization. So you can ask it for the time discretization we just had. A Brownian increment is just a normal distributed random variable. So it is a random variable. And this random variable is also just an interface, yeah, it just tells me that I can, that I can get the value at a given sample path, and I can also get the number of sample paths. And there's also an implementation of this random variable. Yeah? And if you peek into the implementation of the Brown in motion, yeah, this uses our mess and twister, all the stuff we did. Okay, this is maybe put aside. Yeah, I just use this as an helper. And now let's move to our little experiment. And this is the experiment here in Monte Carlo schemes. First, I define an interface that describes a little bit my log normal process. So at a given time index, I can obtain the value of the process. So this is here my x tilde of ti. Then I can automatically calculate the expectation. This is just x tilde of ti get the average. Actually, if you look into the implementation of the average, it uses our Kahan summation. All the stuff is in there. I can calculate the expectation of the logarithm of x tilde. Yeah? So take x tilde of ti, take the logarithm, take the expectation. And I can also take the variance of the logarithm of x tilde. So these are a few default implementations. All I need to do is I have to implement this method. And I now implement this method for the different uh, schemes. So I have the log process Euler scheme. So these are my parameters, number of time steps, the delta t, the time step size, the number of sample paths, if I do Monte Carlo, the initial value, the mu, and the sigma. Yeah? Note that this is now the mu of the log normal process. So the process is dx is mu x dt. And this is the sigma of the log normal process. So the diffusion part is sigma x dw. Yeah, I initialize this stuff. And all the stuff that is done for calculation is actually in this do pre-calculate process. Huh? So maybe I move this down here. So you see everything here. So I take the time discretization, I initialize the time discretization, the Brown in motion, I allocate some memory, yeah? and then I loop over all time steps. And if I'm at the initial time, I just initialize all the values to the initial value. If I am at the other times, I 
create the Euler scheme. So this is the value x tilde at ti. This is the Brownian increment, delta w at ti. So this is the previous value, this is the Brownian increment. And now I loop over all sample paths and I calculate for the Euler scheme. Next value is previous value plus x times mu dt plus x times sigma dw. So you see, this is just the Euler scheme. I have the same for the Milstein scheme, A identical code, except that the calculation now differs here. This was the Euler scheme. This is the Milstein scheme. Yeah? So you see, the only thing that differs is the additional line plus one half x sigma, this is the sigma, times sigma, this is a sigma prime, delta w squared minus delta t, the Milstein scheme. Then I do the log Euler scheme, also very similar code, but now I have that the scheme works differently. It is next value is previous value multiplied with mu delta t minus one half sigma squared delta t plus sigma delta w. Okay, so I have these three schemes. When I'm done with the generation in the scheme, yeah, I just have looped over all sample paths. I wrapped this into this random variable implementation that allows me to calculate the expectation of the logarithm and all this stuff. So this is a little bit hidden there. Let's run now a little test, create our three schemes, calculate the expectation for all the three schemes, also calculate the expectation analytically, the expectation of the logarithm of T, capital T, the last time index. And do the same for the variance and print the results. Yeah, let's run this experiment now. So, and what do we see? So I use 100,000 sample paths in the Monte Carlo simulation. I use one time step, just jump immediately to the end yeah, for the Euler scheme, the Milstein scheme, and the log Euler scheme. Okay, let's enlarge this a little bit. And you see, I now use more and more time steps. I always add 10 time steps, 11 time steps, 21 time steps, and so on. It takes longer and longer, and these are the results. Okay, let's interpret the results, and then we are done for today. So here are the results, if you let it run. So the first thing that you observe is that the Euler scheme generates here not a number for the mean and the variance. The delta M is the deviation of the mean from the analytic solution. And the delta V is the deviation of the variance from the analytic solution. So it's actually the error, the error of the mean and the error of the variance. And here we generate not a number. So why do we generate not a number? So the reason is that I'm taking the logarithm of a negative value. So this means the Euler scheme has accidentally created a negative value and I get not a number, it ruins the complete result. So maybe I have generated the negative value only on a single sample path, but that's already sufficient. And the same happens for the Milstein scheme, but actually it happens for the Milstein scheme just in the case where I just use one time step and it has already gone if I use 11 or 21 time steps. So if you use finer time step size, the normal distribution that you add becomes smaller and the probability that you add a negative number is smaller. And since you have the discretization scheme, dx is sigma x dw, if the x is approaching zero, it is scaled down. 
Yeah? So the risk to jump across the zero is reduced if you take smaller and smaller time steps, yeah, because you are taking smaller and smaller number. Second observation is that we see some convergence here. We also see convergence here. Once the Euler scheme has avoided the negative values, we see convergence. So the Euler scheme avoids the negative values once we have the time steps are small enough. Okay, but then it appears as suddenly the convergence stops, right? I mean, there's no more improvement for the Euler scheme, say, yeah, below. Okay, the Euler scheme improves quite a long time. But for the Milstein scheme, it appears a little bit as if there's no more improvement in this region here. Right, you see there is a the delta V in the second last line, yeah, which is 1.5 already quite large. So why is there no improvement there? Well, the log Euler scheme, yeah, which I have not yet discussed, also shows no improvement. It always has an error. Okay, so what's the reason for this? Yeah. The reason is that I still have a Monte Carlo simulation. Yeah. So what I do here is Monte Carlo, and there is still a Monte Carlo error. There is an improvement in the numerical scheme, but at a certain point, the numerical error from the time discretization scheme is so small that it is hidden below the Monte Carlo error, and actually, this scheme here has no time discretization error. It is only Monte Carlo error. And that's also what you see in the Milstein scheme. Yeah. So already after 100 time steps, yeah, you are quite good in the Milstein scheme. And the remaining error is just the Monte Carlo error. So that was it for today. We had a small tour through time discretization schemes. And the next thing is to really prove that this Euler scheme somehow converges. Yeah, you see maybe here that it converges, converges to the true solution of the stochastic process. That was it for today. Thanks.